Mga kapatid sa pananampalataya, nais ko kayong imbitahan na makinig, sumubaybay at seryosohin ang ating Beya Sunday School every 9.30 in the morning sa ating Beya Facebook page at YouTube channel. Mahalaga na mapakinggan ang mga napapanahong lessons na iatid sa inyo ni Dean Ramsey, Colorado, ang ating Beya Sunday School teacher. Si Dean Ramsey ay isang dating professor at dean ng University of Cordilleras. Siya ay Sunday School teacher ng Baguio City First UMC sa maraming taon na. Gamit natin ang NIV Standard Lesson Commentary na gawa sa Amerika pero inilalagay sa tamang konteksto ng ating Sunday School teacher. Pinag-aaralan ng mga Kristiyanong theologians at dumaan sa masusing paghahanda. Libre naming ibabahagi sa inyo ang mga lessons. Maaari ninyong i-download at gamitin sa inyong mga lokal na simbahan para pag-aralan at ibahagi rin sa iba. Sama-sama tayong mag-aral ng salita ng Diyos para sa kanyang kapurihan at ikakalwalhati. Pagpalain po kayong lahat ng ating Panginoong Yesus. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday School, April 2, 2023. Lesson number five of the third quarter, The Empty Tomb. Background scripture is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, 1 to 12. And the Sunday School material that we are using, the Standard Lesson Commentary, 2022-2023. Let's start with a prayer. Lord, we will be studying the scripture about the empty tomb. We pray, Lord, that you will guide us in our study. We pray that you will open our hearts and our mind so that we will fully comprehend your message for us today through this lesson. These things we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, we are now in the third quarter. Jesus calls us. And in this quarter, we have scriptures from the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and from the book of Acts. So, in this quarter, while we live in God's kingdom on earth and pray for His fullness on earth as it is in heaven, Our hope is for nothing if Jesus has not been raised from the dead. Kung hindi na buhay na mugli si Jesus, ang mga pangako na pinangahawakan natin, mawawalan ng saysay. Wala palang mangyayari sa ating reliyon. As amazing as His resurrection remains, our second unit invites us to remember how difficult It was for Jesus' disciples to grasp. So makikita natin kung gaano kahirap na intindihin ng mga disipulo ni Jesus itong pagkabuhay ng muli ni Jesus. At kung papaano napakahirap para sa kanila ang sumunod kay Jesus. Paano na ngayong wala na si Jesus dito sa lupa? The Spirit remains at work in us. So, you need to, experiencing the resurrection, this is the first lesson for you need to, the empty tomb, Luke 24. These are the lessons that we will have with regards to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then in unit three of this quarter, we will be studying the birth of the church. So we go through our scripture, then later on we go back and let us see the analysis of all these verse by verse, praise by praise. Luke 24, 1 to 12. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. 
they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of the sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went, aw went away wondering to himself what happened. Sa Tagalog, umagang-umaga ng araw ng linggo, ang mga babae nagtungo sa libingan. Dala ang mga pabangong inihanda nila. Nang dumating sila, naratnan nilang naigulong na ang batong nakatakip sa pintuan ng libingan. Ngunit nang pumasok sila, wala ang bangkay ng Panginoong Hesus. Samantalang nagugulo ang kanilang isip tungkol dito, Nakita nila at sukat, stabi nila ang dalawang lalaking nakasisilaw ang damit. Dahil sa matinding takot, sila'y lumuhod. Sayad ang mukha sa lupa. Tinanong sila ng mga lalaki, bakit ninyo hinahanap ang buhay sa gitna ng mga patay? Wala na siya rito. Siya'y muling nabuhay. Alalahanin ninyo ang sinabi niya sa inyo noong nasa Galilea pa siya. Ang anak ng tao ay kailangang may pagkanulo sa mga makasalanan at may pako sa krus at sa ikatlong araw ay muling mabuhay. At naalaala ng mga babae ang mga sinabi niya. Pagbabalik mula sa libingan, isinalaysay nila ang lahat ng ito sa labing isa at sa iba pang kasama nila. Ang mga babaeng ito ay sina Maria Magdalena, Juana at Maria ang ina ni Santiago. Sila at ang iba pang mga babaeng kasama nila ang nagbalita nito sa mga apostol. Ngunit inakala ng mga apostol na kahibangan lamang ang kanilang siyabi, kaya hindi nila pinaniwalaan ang mga babae. Gayun may tumindig si Pedro at patakbong nagpunta sa libingan. Yumukod siya at pagtingin sa loob ay wala siyang nakita kundi ang mga kayong lino. Kaya tumuwi siyang nagtataka sa nangyari. Key verse is Luke 24, 5b to 6a. The man said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has reason. Lesson aim. List important facts surrounding the discovery of the empty tombs. Ano yung mga Nangyari, ano yung mga nakita, ano yung mga katotohanan na nakapalibot dito sa empty tomb. Compare and contrast the women's expectation of the tomb versus its reality. Ano, ihawang ambing, ihalim tulad yung mga inaasahan ng mga babae at kung ano yung kanilang natagpuan. Ano ang kanilang inaasahan makikita doon sa libingan ni Jesus at ano yung kanilang nakita. Identify his or her personal expectations that Jesus might happen. Meron tayong, meron ba tayong mga personal na eksperyensya na iba yung ating expectations pero iba ang nangyari at ito ay dahil sa mayroong Ginawa ang Panginoong Isos sa atin. Baliktad 
sa ating inaasahan. Lesson outline. So we have introduction, some good news, and then yung lesson context, saan nakapaloob itong ating lesson. Then morning discovery, verse 1 to 7. Bearing witness, yung mga witness, nakakita. Conclusion, the good news, the best news. Okay, introduction, some good news. Yan, anong nangyari noong 2020? Coronavirus pandemic. Yan, dahil dito, everybody were desperate to receive some good news. There is so much uncertainty. Ang mga pamilya ay nag-aalala, hindi sila nakikita, hindi makabiyahe. Dahil they're so concerned of the exposure to the virus. Malungkot ang buhay. Ngayon, itong si John Krasinski, isang actor and filmmaker, nakaisip siya. Sabi niya, this is a perfect time to share good news. So, noong March 29, 2020, meron siyang ginawang mga video. It is a series. Some Good News, yun ang kanyang series, yun ang title, Some Good News. Each episode about 20 minutes. So, yung pinos niya ito, it highlighted several positive feel-good stories. Yan, yun ang laman ng kanyang, uh, yung kanyang mga video. Feel-good stories. So, by late 2021, Over 70 million views of the nine episodes. Biglang kumalat. Everybody is uh, viewing this, this uh, video of uh, John Krasinski. Why? Because it is an evidence that people want good news. Dahil sa pandemic, napakalungkot ang mga tao ay naghahanap ng Good news. At ito yung prueba. 70 million views of the nine episode. However, just because people hear good news does not always mean that they will believe that good news. Yan. Pero, eh, good news. Kaya lang, alahanin natin. Maaring hindi rin naniniwala ang mga tao. Today's scripture follows after the narrative of Jesus' crucifixion. Itong lesson natin, pagkatapos ng crucifixion ni Jesus, ito na yung ating pinag-aaralan. Diba? Torture and execution by crucifixion was one way that the Roman Empire demonstrated its power over subjects. Isa yung itong paraan ng Roman Empire para ipakilala kung sino sila, who is sovereign, who is in power. Yan yung crucifixion. Brutal process. Slowly killed his victim. Matagal na process. Unti-unti ang pagpatay. Papatak-patak ang dugo. Nadidehydrate dahil sa init. Walang tubig. Tapos, siyempre, shock and asphyxiation. Nasasakal, hindi makahinga. Pero paunti-unti. Prolonged and humiliating death was the primary aim of crucifixion. Sinasadya ito. Ito talaga ang gustong mangyari ng Roman Empire. Unti-unti ang iyong pagkamatay. At masakit. Brutal process. Pagkatapos, even if they are dead, they remain on the crosses for several days. Pinababayaan doon ang mga namatay sa cross. Para panuorin, spectacle para tingnan ng mga tao. Why? It is a passive threat to all who oppose the ruling powers. Yan ang purpose niyan. Ito ay para bigyan ng warning ang mga tao na gustong lumaban dun sa Roman Empire. Jesus died after only several hours, pero hindi ganito nangyari kay Jesus. Si Jesus ay 
madali ang kanyang pagkamatay. Several hours na matay na siya. And his body did not remain on the cross. Why? Mangyari nung namatay na siya, pumunta itong si Joseph of Arimathea kay Pilato at hiningi yung bangkay ni Jesus. Sabi ni Pilato, bakit? Patay na. Opo, patay na po si Jesus. Oh, bilis naman. Diba? So who is Joseph of Arimathea? He is a member of the Council of Sanhedrin. Isa sa mga malaking tao ng church. So he asked permission. Meron siyang sariling libingan. Yung libingan niya ay nakakarve dun sa bato. Nakakarve dun sa bato. And Jesus was buried in his tomb. Ordinarily, mga strangers hindi pinapayagan yan na mangyari. But in this case, it is an exception. Jesus' body was wrapped in burial clothes. And as it was in tomb, yan. May pinaluputan nila ng, ng uh, burial clothes. Mayroong burial clothes. May mga pabango, spices. Isa si Dinokodimo sa nagdala ng mga pabango doon. Because Jesus was buried the evening before Sabbath, additional spices have to uh, be administered after Sabbath. Hindi pa kumpleto yung mga spices. Kaya lang Sabbath day na. So, bago Friday night, uh, umpisa na ng Sabbath celebration, buong araw ng Sabado, babalik lang yung mga, makakabalik lang yung gusto maglagay pa ng additional spices para kay Jesus on the third day, which is already the Sunday. Joseph's tomb was like many others that were carved in the rock, chiseled niches allowed for several. Pwedeng maraming mayroong mga iba pa na, ikulong, na, na, na i, i, ilibing doon. Then, a large flat stone would seal the tomb's entrance. Mayroong malaking bato na isasara doon to seal the entrance. Bakit anong purpose ng malaking bato na yon? To prevent thieves from stealing valuable artifacts or even bodies. Yan ang purpose. So talagang mabigat yon. Hindi basta-basta nagagalaw yung, yung bato na nilalagay. Tombs remain sealed until all the remains of the body were its bones. Ang pagka nalusaw na yung, yung laman, buto na lang ang natitira, then pwede nang buksan uli yung tomb. Bakit? Kukunin yung mga bato, ay yung buto. Kukunin yung buto at ilalagay sa usuari. Usuari. Many first century Jews believe in the physical resurrection of the dead. This doctrine can be traced to the Old Testament. Yan. Doon pa, ang mga Hudyo, may mga Hudyo na naniniwala sa resurrection. Bakit? Mangyari nabanggit yan. Nabanggit yan sa Book of Job. Nabanggit yan sa, sa, kay Daniel. Ja, Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 and 13. Nabanggit yung tungkol sa resurrection of the righteous. Tungkol dun sa uh, Even those that are not righteous, they will go to hell. By the time of the first century AD, the doctrine of the resurrection had been accepted by several parties of Judaism. So, even doon sa first church in the book of Acts, may mga grupo, well, ito yung mga Sadducees, they don't believe in the resurrection. Pero, yung mga Pharisees, they believe in the resurrection. During his earthly ministry, Jesus had prophesied regarding his death, burial, and resurrection. Pinangangaral ito ni Jesus nung buhay pa siya. Anong pa nga sinasabi niya? He prophesied about his death. Sinabi na niya maraming beses. Sinabi niya kung anong gagawin sa kanya. Pero sinabi rin niya na siya ay mabubuhay na muli. However, the concept of suffering and resurrection resurrected with Savior was incomprehensible even to the disciples. Ito yung napakahirap tanggapin, napakahirap unawain kahit nitong mga disciples. Ano yun? Yung ang Savior ay magsasuffer. Yung at ang Savior ay mabubuhay na muli. Napakahirap na unawain. It is incomprehensible. Ano? Mabubuhay na muli. 
Matthew, Mark, John are parallel texts to today's scripture. Yan. Kaya nga, lahat, lahat ng Gospels, these four Gospels, binanggit itong lesson natin ngayon. Meron silang narrative itong lesson ngayon. Each Gospel writer included certain details found only in specific narrative. Sabi dyan, mayroong mga detalya na uh, doon lang makikita, parang exclusive each of them. Katulad halimbawa, example, a violent earthquake, makikita mo lang yan doon sa kay Matthew. A young man dressed in white robe, doon lang kay Mark makikita. The women's interaction with Jesus, doon kay Matthew lang makikita. Mary Magdalene's experience, doon lang kay John. Kanya, mayroong mga detalya doon sa, sa, mang, sa uh, resurrection, resurrection ni Jesus na hindi pareho, na doon lamang nakikita. These differences do not invalidate the accounts. Napaka-importante na patunayan na totoo itong resurrection. Otherwise, wala na tayong pinangahawakan sa ating reliyon. Wala na yung hope natin. What is our hope? That we will be there with the Lord Jesus in paradise. Dahil God resurrected, Jesus resurrected, we will also resurrect. And our hope is to live with Him in paradise. The promised inheritance, the paradise, wala na kung hindi nagkaroon ng resurrection. At kung hindi totoo, kaya napaka-importante na alagaan ito. Yung mga pagkakaibang ito, it does not invalidate the truth. Kung baga, may mga witnesses, kanya-kanyang angulo sila from different bad dates point of view of what happened. So, Iisa ang kwento, pero may mga detalya na siya lang ang nakakita, siya lang ang nakakita, siya lang ang nakakita. All these things, in fact, give, uh, parang authenticate the truthfulness of the event. Kapag masyadong pare-pareho itong mga narrative ng mga witnesses, ay magmumukhang set play. Magmumukhang parang ginawa-gawa lamang. Okay, now we go to the scripture. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took spices and prepared. So, naglakad na yung mga babae, very in the morning, at araw na ng linggo on the third day, that is on Sunday, para asikasuhin uli yung bangkay ni Jesus, dagdagan yung mga aroma, spices, etc., etc. The law of Moses prevented anyone from working on the Sabbath. Ipinaliliwanag dito. Yan yung law of Moses. Ha? Pagka Sabbath day na, which is, which, and, the, and this starts in the evening of Friday, the whole day of Saturday, hanggang morning ng Sunday. All work ceased by the beginning of Sabbath at sundown. On, and at the tomb Sunday morning, the women wanted to care for Jesus. Buddy. So yun na. Gusto nilang asikasuhin ang bangkay ni Jesus. They wanted to serve Jesus even for the last time. <laughs> Yun yung isip nila sa kauli-huli ang pagkakataon na ipagsilbihan natin ang ating Master. Can you view your services to God and others as an act of worship? They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Dumating na sila, nakita ng mga babae na the stones were rolled away from the tomb. Wala na yung malaking bato na nakasara. Large stone at tombs entrance. Yung malaki, talagang malaki. Uh, hindi kaya ng uh, mga dalawa, tatlong tao. Because of the concerns of chief priests and Pharisees, the disciples might remove the body. Pontius Pilate allowed additional security. Yan. Kasi, ito yung inaalaala ng mga chief, itong chief priests and Pharisees na baka baka nakawin ng mga disipulo yung, yung bangkay ni Jesus. Bakit? Ay mangyari, Jesus is claiming that He will rise again. He will resurrect. So, binabantayan ngayon ito. That's why mayroong additional security. Bukod sa malaking bato, 
yung bato ay meron pang seal. Seal. Sealed stone. Hindi mo pwedeng galawin yan. Pag ginalaw mo yung bato, magkakrak yung seal. Ha? And may gwardya. So, malaki ang bato. May seal pa yung bato. At mayroong gwardya. Ay eh, mangyari. Ang issue rito ay gusto nilang patunayan na hindi mabubuhay si Jesus. There will be no resurrection. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Tinignan nila, wala na ron yung, yung patay. Ngayon, let us see. Let us talk about this uh, uh, Lord Moses. The Lord Moses warned that if a person touched a dead body, then that person would be considered unclean. So, malaking bagay sa mga Israelita ito. Hindi mo pwedeng basta-basta galawin ang patay. Hindi mo pwedeng harawakan. Why? You will be unclean, spiritually unclean. Alam nyo, may mga process yan. And if you don't go under the process, ha, you are clean. He shall be cut off from Israel. Merong malaking uh, kaparusahan kung uh, ikaw ay hindi nag-undergo ng cleansing. This might explain why one disciple did not enter the tomb. <laughs> Maari ito raw yung paliwanag. Kasi nung, nung pina, yung pass forward tayo, nung pina, binalita ng mga babae doon sa mga disciples, kasama si Peter and John, ha? ang ginawa ni Peter at John ay pumunta sila, tumakbo sila papunta doon sa tomb. At nauna si John, pero hindi siya pumasok. Why? Maybe because of this law of Moses of being unclean. The possibility of a state uncleanness of uncleanliness did not hinder the women from entering. Take note, yung mga babae, wala silang pakialam. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men clothes that gleamed like lightning. Yeah, merong dalawang lalaki na talagang ang damit nila ay kumikislap, nagniningning bright. So, naguguluhan sila, wondering, na confused, ano ba nangyari? Then dumating yung lalaki. And later in chapter in chapter 24-23, it was they were later described as angels. So, maraming mga maraming mga scriptures na the same description of the angel Description that confirms their heavenly identities. Yan, Luke, 20, Luke 9, 29-30, nung transfiguration. Diba? Yung mga damit. Damit ni Jesus, damit ni Moses, damit ni Elijah, dun sa transfiguration. Nagniningning, lalo na yung kay Jesus. Diba? In the book of Acts, nung Jesus ascension, nagniningning ang kanilang mga damit. This, uh, this confirms heavenly identities. Verse 5, In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the two men said to them, But the men said to them, Why do you look <coughs> for the living among the dead? Bakit nyo hinahanap yung buhay sa, dito sa mga patay? Natakot sila. Lumuhod sila. Naka, at ang mukha nila ay nakadikit na sa lupa. Luke's gospel describes how people were afraid when seeing God's messengers. Yeah, maraming beses at ang mga tao ay natatakot pag nakakita sila ng God's messengers. So we have examples in, uh, in the case maybe of Mary. Yeah, maybe in the case of uh, Zacharias. Zacharias. Well, Experiencing God's power, they also were afraid. And this one is, I think it is in the case of when Jesus calmed down the storm, natakot yung mga kasama niya. And meeting the resurrected Christ, 24-7-39. Na, uh, may mga passages na yung mga nakakita kay Kristo ay natatakot. So this is described in the Luke Gospel. People were afraid when they see God, messenger, 
They were afraid when experiencing God's power. They were afraid when they meet the resurrected Christ. The women sought Jesus' body in the tomb, but the angels provided a corrective. Ano yung? Hinahanap ng mga babae yung si Jesus, yung namata, yung, yung katawan, yung bangkay ni Jesus. Pero kinorek sila ng anghel. Jesus was no longer dead, but was alive in both body and spirit. He walked with the living. He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? Yan. Sabi niya, o, oh, ipinaalaala sa kanila. Naalala niyo ba yung kanyang pangaral sa inyo nung nandun pa siya sa Galilea? Yan. The underlying Greek verb behind has risen is in passive voice. Ano ibig sabihin niyan? Sabi niyan, it presumes that This means that Jesus was raised from the dead through a power beyond His own. Ganun daw pagkakaiba at pagkakagamit niyo itong Greek verb which is in passive. So, ini-imply na Jesus was uh, risen through a power beyond His own. The totality of Scripture, however, points that Jesus' resurrection resulted from the power of the entire triune Godhead. Pero sabi niya, maraming mga scriptures na nagpupun, nag, it's pointing to the point that the triune God, the triune God, all of them were involved in raising the uh, Jesus from the dead. All the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. There is one God, but in three persons. So let us see. Resurrected Jesus. Jesus said, in three days, I will raise up. So, Jesus was saying, I will, ri- I, I will be alive again in three days. And I will rise up. And, of course, there is the Father. And in Romans, if the Spirit who raised Jesus, these are scriptures pointing to the totality of the scripture that the triune God, the, the three persons of, the, of God, we are all involved in raising up Jesus from the dead. When Jesus ministered in Galilee, He had taught disciples in private, etc. So, kasama yan. No, yun yung sinasabi. Remember what He told you? Narara, narara, na, naaalala nyo ba yung pangaral niya sa inyo? Yan. So, in a, in a capsule, Sila sabi ngayon ng angel, yung kanilang, yung kanyang mga pangaral ni Jesus. Kanya. Di ba? Kinento niya sa inyo, ang, he prophesied tungkol sa kanyang kamatayan and resurrection. The women presumably received similar teachings from the disciples or from Jesus' public statements. The fulfillment of his prophecy shows that Jesus is both omniscient and omnipotent. Yung fulfillment, yung pagkatotoo ng prophecy ni Jesus nagpapatunay na siya ay alam niya ang lahat ng nangyayari at siya ang totoo ang kanyang kapangyarihan. The Son of Man must be delivered over the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day, be raised again. Ito yung pangaral niya sa inyo. Di ba? Ito. Patuloy yung lecture, yung reminder ng anghel. The Son of Man must be delivered. And He will be crucified. And on the third day, be raised again. Siyempre, kapsul na yan. The angels repeated the main points of Jesus' teaching regarding His suffering in resurrection. Now, let us Look at this word, Son of Man. Son of Man. The Son of Man, the title comes from book of Daniel. Daniel 7.13. Yan. How? Nung diniscribe ni, ni Daniel itong Son of Man. Son of Man who will be given all divine authority and power. At ginamit niya, the, the Son of Man who will be given all the divine authority and power. Yan yung Son of Man. And prophetic words of, of Daniel. 
And then Jesus used this title when referring to ginamit ni Jesus, yung Son of Man, when he is referring to his divine authority. In Luke 5.24, that the Son of Man will have power to forgive sin. His authority, he is talking about his, when he is, Jesus used the title Son of Man when he is talking about his divine authority. And one of them is his power to forgive sin. <laughs> Only God can forgive sin. And when he's talking about his power, in Matthew 25, Son of Man comes in his glory and sit, uh, that should be sit, and sit on his throne. Son of Man comes in his glory and sit on his throne. And Jesus is referring to himself, the Son of Man, in his glory. And Jesus uses the titles Son of Man when he is talking of his humility. Where? Matthew 8.20 The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And he also used the, son, the title Son of Man when he was referring to his suffering and death. The Son of Man will be cleared and on the third day he will rise. Jesus showed his divine authority by defeating the forces of sin and death. Ano ang naaccomplish ni Jesus doon sa cross? The payment of the ransom for our sin. All of us committed sin. All of us deserve to die. All of us should be on the cross. Jesus is, has no sin. Jesus is not guilty of any sin, but he was the one who is on the cross to pay the ransom for our sin. And he defeated death. How was death defeated? Jesus resurrected. Jesus resurrected. Therefore, we are assured that because Jesus resurrected, we will also resurrect. And therefore, we will have this life on earth is temporary. After that is the eternal life. And the promise of Jesus is that he will be with us for eternity in paradise. That is what we are hoping for. This occurred only as he took upon himself the very nature of servant and humbled himself by becoming obedient to death and to give life as a ransom for many. Verse 8 and 9. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. Kaya bumalik na sila doon sa kinaruruna ng mga disciples, yung eleven at saka others, at ibinalita sa kanila. The women remembered Jesus' re- teaching regarding his death and resurrection. While they acknowledged his teaching, it remained to be known whether they understood the why. Okay, nawala na siya. Naniniwala siya sa mga Naniniwala siya doon sa sirabi ng angel na totoo nga. Yan nga ang tinuro sa amin. Pero ang sabi nito, naintindihan kaya talaga nila ang mga nangyayari. Part of Jesus' ministry focused on the marginalized of society. Ito na naman. Yung mga marginalized. No? May, may ma- nakafocus. Marami doon sa pag-aaral ni Jesus ay nakafocus sa mga marginalized. Sino itong mga to? Yung mga physical il may mga physical ailments mga pilay yung mga demon possessed mga demoniac children women the revelation of the empty tomb continued the trend of showing special attention to the marginalized isa sa mga marginalized na binabanggit ay women but in this instance the women will bless they receive blessing of being First human witness to Jesus' resurrection. Sila yung kauna-unahan na nakawitness ng resurrection ni Jesus. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. So marami sila, tatlong pangalan ng lumabas. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James. Sino tong si Mary Magdalene? Delivered from seven demons. Yan, meron demonyo. Si Mary Magdalene. Pero pinalayas ni Jesus yung demonyo. And then, 
naging kasama na niya. Magdalena, Magdalene means from Magdala. She is the first to see the resurrected Christ. Wow! Siga! Siya ang unang nakakita sa resurrected Christ. Ito naman ang pangalawang babae na pinangalanan, Joanna. Who is Joanna? Wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod Antipas household. Mataas ang katungkulan ng asawa nitong si Joanna dun sa, dun sa bahay ni Herod Antipas. The third Mary, the third woman may name is Mary the mother of James. And perhaps Joseph, kasi mangyari binanggit din sa Matthew 27:25. By one proposal she was Jesus' mother. Sinasabi, ito ba ay, ito ba yung mother ni Jesus? Ito ba ito ang Mary the ma- mangyari Jesus has a half brother James and half brother Joseph and half brother Judas and half brother Simon. Eh, sabi din, Mary, the mother of James. And Jesus has a half-brother. Ang pangalan ay James. And meron ulit binanggit na Joseph doon sa Matthew 27:56. And again, Jesus has a half-brother named Joseph. So, ito kaya yung ito kaya yung mother ni Jesus? However, sabi din, Luke's identification of her by way of Jesus, a brother, is unexpected. Kaya lang, hindi yan. Hindi. Dahil si Luke ay uh, in-identify itong Mary nito by means of being a brother of, of Jesus na si James. Hindi mangyayari. Sabi. Bakit? In the book of Acts, and book of Acts is also written by Luke. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Ganon ang pagkaka-describe uh, ni Luke. So sabi, no. At marami rin nagsasabi na the mother of Jesus was not in the tomb. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was in the crucifixion, but she was not in the tomb. Apostles, sino naman itong mga apostles na ito? Who told to the apostles, refers to the chosen disciples, earthly ministry. Siyempre, yung 11, dati 12 yan eh, kaya lang, 11 na lang, dahil nga, wala na eh, naichipwera na si Judas. Luke's point was to show the immediate results of their receiving women's message. Ang puntos dito ni Apostle, ni, ni Luke, ay para ipakita na itong mga disciples na ito ay they were receiving women's message. Dahil napaka-importante, napakahalaga ng issue na ito na patutuhanan na totoo si Jesus ay nabuhay na maguli. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Sabi rito, they did not believe the women because their words seemed to be to them like nonsense. Hindi dahil babae, kundi dahil yung sinasabi nila eh, walang katuturan. Yung, yung balita nila ay walang katuturan. Hindi dahil purki babae sila. Mangyari nung araw, The law of Moses did not prohibit testimony of women. However, first century AD, Jew, Jewish historian Josephus wrote that a woman's testimony was disallowed. Mayroong mga panahon na ganun. At sinabi yan ni Josephus, the historian. Pero, it is not because they are women na hindi naniniwala itong mga, mga disciple, but rather because the news is Nonsense. The validity of an empty tomb and resurrected Jesus. The apostles doubted the validity of an empty tomb and a resurrected Jesus. For as yet, they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Hindi pa talaga nila naintindihan yung sinasabi ni Jesus na he has to rise from the dead. Peter However, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves and he went away wondering to himself what happened. Tumakbo si Pedro. Pumunta doon sa tomb. Tinignan niya at nakita niya yung yung uh, linen, yung pinambalot sa kanya. Nandun lang, by itself. Wala na yung, wala na yung katawan. 
At nagwo-wonder ano kaya nangyari. So, burial garments laid by themselves. Kung, kung may kinalaman ang mga magnanakaw, eh, kung hindi na nila, hindi nila tatanggalin at ilalagay doon ng maayos yung, yung pinambalot sa patay. He went away wondering what happened. Peter's journey of faith had come to another critical juncture. Ito ngayon yung, yung journey ng kanyang faith. Dumating na naman sa malagang, malagang punto. He had once expressed faith that Jesus was God's Messiah. You remember? Diba? But under pressure, he denied knowing Jesus. Dream mo yan? He expressed that Jesus, that God, that, that Jesus was God's Messiah. Pero, dininay din niya. Now, the challenge of the women's message, would he believe the resurrection? For the women at the tomb, the angels brought true good news. Jesus had defeated death as he had been raised from the dead. As a result, he is now the resurrected king who rules over all creation. Although other disciples initially doubted the women's witness, those same disciples would eventually see their resurrected Lord. Nag-doubt sila. Pero yung pagpapatuloy ng, uh, ng istorya, ilang beses nilang na-inkwentro na- ang the resurrected Jesus. As they receive and believe in that good news, they were called to proclaim it to the world. Ito ngayon ang katuloy ano ngayon ang katuloy na sila naman ang magbabalita ngayon sa mundo? That Jesus was dead and buried and He rose again. And the story will continue. And all of us <coughs> are charged with this responsibility to share the good news. The good news of the resurrection began with the women's witness and went to all nations. We believers have a role to play in proclaiming that very song good news. Followers of Jesus are called to proclaim the good news of Jesus' resurrection to the world. Are you merely believing in that good news? Or are you also proclaiming that good news to the world? Rejoice in the good news. Jesus is risen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for dying on the cross for us. Thank you because you have defeated death and therefore our hope that we will live with you in heaven for eternity will really come true. Thank you for this so that we are assured that we are belong to a true religion. Help us in our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The uh, last slide will be lesson number six. Disciples believe the resurrection. Magandang umaga po at pagpalain kayo ng Diyos.
Kopi tayo. Oo, oh, kopi tayo ngayon.